Why, yes, that is an original copy of the 2003 Avril Lavigne My World concert tour hanging on my wall. And yes, it is iconic. <laughs> hey y'all, it's me, Buster Levine, and welcome back to Hot or Rot. And today we'll be reviewing episode two of Canada's Drag Race. Our little maple leaves were split into groups and challenged to improv in a challenge called QV She, a parody of the longtime shopping network channel QVC. And the runway category was gemstones. So we'll be breaking down each queen's performance in the episode as I saw it, and then looking at the golden beaver twist and talking about what it means for this season. Now let's get into it. First up, we've got CC Superstar, who is in the Shade Blockers group, whose product is some sunglasses with some feather decorations on on the side. And CeCe's contribution to the selling of these shade blockers was notable, but not very noteworthy. Because while she didn't really try to sell these shade blockers or talk about any cool features of them, imaginary or real, she was the first one in their group to say, that'll do, which kind of became their catchphrase and crutch for when they didn't know what to say. And layered into her QVC character was this sort of goofy, like from Disney voice, which was odd, but funny? And the thing with Cece, like last week, is that she was funny, but I don't know how much of it was intentional and how much of it was just because she's being her silly, goofy, crazy self. Like truthfully, she was the only funny thing about her group. It was just that there wasn't a lot of substance to anything she was really saying, which was unfortunate because she could have made these shade blockers a hit. And because there was no substance here, I'm gonna give this performance a rod. But on the runway where her gemstone was amethyst, I was really happy to see that she definitely had a market improvement from last week's runway. Besides, you know, what was happening or not happening, I should say with the shoe situation, which gags me a little bit for for sure, I thought there was something weird going on with the way she was walking the runway. And then during critiques, Brad calls her out and he's like, were you wearing shoes on the runway? And she was like, maybe I wasn't. <laughs> And the thing is, she's so tall, she could have gotten away with it if her dress hadn't have lifted while she was walking. But guess what, Mimi? It did. And why, for the love of drag, was she not wearing shoes on the runway? Who knows? But I do think it kind of spoke to her lack of polish when compared to some of the other queens in this competition. The dress though, I do want to give her some praise for, I think had a really strong silhouette, had a great length in the train. And this would be like a three flame hot, but you know, the shoot situation. So we're going to leave it at a warming up. And next up, Kiki Ko, who by and large led this group's presentation and was kind of the only one keeping them on track for what little track there was to speak of, which she deserves a lot of credit for because the other two contributed almost nothing besides that'll do and just repeating what the other queens said in their group. But what she did just wasn't enough to save this group's absolute train wreck of a QVC presentation. So yes, she was the best of her group, but still not great. So I'm gonna give this performance a rot. But on the runway, oh my God, this is mm, chef's kiss, drag perfection, eleganza girl. She's coming all the way from Emerald City in her emerald colored outfit. This is gorgeous. It's giving green phoenix rising from the forest. And every millimeter of this look is completely untouchable. The curls, the swirls, the mug, the makeup, the gown, the gaggery, the goopery, this look is hot. And finally for our shade blockers group, we have Denim, who didn't really do a lot here. She kind of repeated some things that her partner said, but otherwise looks like a deer in the headlights. And I was kind of gagged. She basically got away with saying nothing for this entire challenge. And hopefully this performance is not a preview of what's to come in future performance challenges for Denim, but this is a on the runway though, oh my God. And this might've been what saved her from a bottom position tonight. Her zone was Moonstone and she has warped this into a crazy evil devil creature from the swamp lagoons of the moon, I suppose. Like this is pure nightmare fuel. And I love how she has perfectly balanced this delicate, pretty, campy, almost cloud of, of a look with these crazy teeth and eyes and makeup. To the moon and back, this look is <laughs> Like girl who knew extraterrestrials were serving this hard. Imagine the fashion shows on the moon. Anywho, our next set of products is the Fierce Flats line. And first up, we've got Kitten Caboodle, who absolutely killed this challenge. Like, you can't tell me she does not moonlight as a QVC saleswoman, or at least will not be receiving some calls to do so in the future, because what she did here was gold. Kitten just 100% understood the assignments. Like, she clearly has spent hours and hours watching QVC. As have I. It's entertaining. Girl, put it on the background. It's funny. Trust me. But this idea of having a quirky character escalating the sales pitch as we go through the commercial and then doing the customer testimony with the wig turnaround was just genius. And y'all better believe I'm calling in right now to order my Fierce Flats because this performance was hot. And on the runway, she is serving as a little tourmaline gemstone. 
whatever that is. Okay, tourmaline is a gemstone that belongs to a complex family of borosilicate mixed with iron, magnesium, or other various metals. It's kind of ugly, but then it gets polished into like a, like a pink. It's like me when I get into drag. She here is giving us a little Barbarella fantasy, which I think works perfectly for this concept of gemstones, which kind of lends itself to that space warrior thing in the first place. Her cat suit was absolutely gorgeous, and I think even the judges said she didn't need the cape to complete the look, but it took it to the next level. And it's clear King Caboodle did not come to play mama. She came to slay. This look is hot. <laughs> I will say though, the wig was giving stuff in a suitcase and then she had 10 minutes after she finished her makeup to get it looking back and work in order and <laughs> she tried to tease it, but just pissed it off. And next up, Melinda Verga, who like Kitten was very much in her element here. And I don't know if it was their age and probably experience watching this show that made them so good at this challenge or possibly just their many combined years of experience in drag and you know, hosting shows and such, but wow, they played perfectly to each other, made sure there was no awkward silence, demo the product, sold us on why we needed them and what she did here was absolutely killer. This was <laughs> And on the runway, she has the gemstone cubic zirconium, which was kind of shady. I'm not sure if the queens themselves picked these gemstones, but the fact that she has CZ and then another queen we'll get to here in a second has diamonds, I don't know, it's kind of shady. Anywho, her look here, solid. It's a solid look. And most importantly, I think it's a vast improvement upon what she did for her ball looks last episode. I really like the cage elements built into the corsetry and like, yeah, could she have done more than just icy princess? Sure, but sometimes a look just has to be a look and this look is a safe lab made pot. And our next group is selling a product called the Tip Tataz we'll say, which was led by Miss Venus. And oh my God, the, the only thing that I had written when I was watching this was Venus is a superstar. I can't wait to watch her and can go head to head in Snatch Game because the characterization that they both brought separately, oh my God. She was 100% giving that eccentric Southern woman selling items on QVC and like trust. I live in the South, I know her, I've met her. Sometimes I am her. And Venus was extra impressive in her group because she was kind of carrying the other two in a way. She was much more confident and aware of what they were being asked to do and sold bunny. This was <laughs> And on the runway, we've got a drag queen's best friend, Diamonds. And this look, y'all, y'all, for real, for real, for real, slay on God boots, period. Head to toe, this look is just absolute genius. She is basically wearing a black cat suit covered in diamonds. Her face is covered, like, and not even with eye holes or mouth holes for a face skinny, but just covered in diamonds. And she's got this giant hood that she folds down into part of the dress. That's drag. Actually, forget drag. Th this is just fashion at the intersection of drag and high concept. I love this look and I love everything Venus is bringing so far. She is really surprising me. This look is hot. And next up, how far down does the rabbit hole go? It's Aurora Matrix, who in the sketch is a great compliment to Venus's Southern woman character who mostly spent her time setting up the product for demonstration by Aurora. And while her Southern lady character wasn't as big or eccentric as Venus's, it did the job. And I wanna note, Aurora did a great job, I think tying up the loose ends of this product's presentation because she showed us what it looks like and how to use it. Which again, in a QVC inspired challenge is exactly what needed to be done. She gave what needed to be go. This performance was <sighs> on the runway, her gemstone is jade. And as she comes out from behind that curtain, she is talking about how she is embodying the actual jade goddess, which is on this pendant that her mother gave her, really great. I love her references and I love how she is bringing in culture, heritage and drag into these high concept looks. Like her skin is painted green. She's got this hair in these giant chain locks. Dragon drama, this is a good look. And I think it goes without saying this look is hot. And next up for this group, we've got the girlfriend experience who in the challenge starts off really good. And you can see that her character, the way she's painted and her hair is disheveled, got a cigarette hanging out of her mouth, is a little wilder than her maybe church going Southern sisters. And I thought she was gonna knock it out of the park with her first line where she says the Lord provides, but sometimes you get to dance with the devil. Unfortunately though, I guess her nerves got to her because at some point she starts giggling during the delivery of her lines and then never recovers. It was like she completely shut down and we watched her crash and burn and really say nothing else for the entire challenge. So unfortunately this was a rot. I'm not sure if she was going through something that we didn't hear about this episode, but it seemed that she carried that shutdown energy into the runway. The bouncy, flirtatious, exciting, 
girlfriend experience that we got last week just wasn't there, even though the look she was giving was absolutely gorgeous. Her gemstone was pearl, and it's kind of a nod to Aphrodite, sirens, mermaids, and all of those fun creatures of the sea who seduce the sailors. I hope she shakes this off, but this look is definitely a safe hot for me. And next up, we've got the Party Poncho group, led by the fabulous Luna Dubois. Fabulous. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. And she takes charge of introducing the group's product, the party poncho, to everyone, but kind of says a lot without saying very much at all. It's like she's so focused on trying to hold this regal poise about her character, which is respectable, yes, but it prevented her from actually having fun on the set and giving what needed to be given for a TV camera performance. It was like she was just asleep at the wheel. And as soon as her partner started forgetting what to say or not knowing what to do, do, she shut down and just kind of said the word fabulous over and over. And girl, if Miss Luna does not Lucy LaDuca let loose, this could spell trouble for her because she was kind of blaming her teammates in this challenge for going quiet in the second half of the performance. But the reality is this is really an improv thing and her teammates missing lines really shouldn't have affected where she could have taken this party poncho idea. So in this performance, I'm gonna give a rock on the runway. <laughs> She is giving us some Tony the Tiger eleganza with her gemstone, Topaz. And I love the moment <laughs> where the judges ask her what a tiger costume covered in gems has to do with Topaz. And she's kind of like, I, it doesn't really have much to do with it. <laughs> She said, I want to serve a tiger look and y'all can't stop me. Kind of iconic. And yeah, I can say, I think a little more through line with the brief and execution of what she delivered would have been nice. But I didn't hate this. It was interesting, at least, right? Like, it was fun. I had fun with it. And it's creative and artsy. I like the tiger. I'm going to give this a safe hot. And next up, we have Near Enough, who did almost Near Enough in the challenge this week. She had to give a character that had a bigger personality than, like, let's say, Luna's, but again, didn't say much about the actual product. This group spent the entire two, three minutes or whatever that they had to present these, basically just saying, here is a party poncho, this is a party poncho, this is what a party poncho looks like. And you're like, what is going on? And it's not until the very end where the main feature of the party poncho is revealed to be its reveal. And I think had she gotten to the point a little bit quicker, this could have been good for her because again, her characterization wasn't bad. But this was a missed opportunity, so I'm gonna give it a rat. But on the runway, she's giving us a little red for filth ruby gemstone, and she looks gorgeous. I love also that she did that solid black pinup hair, kind of mixing those vintage styles with like a glam rock inspo for the, the crop jacket and pants. And overall, this felt really cohesive and like she has a good sense of the style her drag character is going to be executing on. And she looks great. I think this look is hot. But when we're looking at the lineup here of all these queens, Nira's gonna need to push some bigger concepts or she is just gonna get completely swallowed by some of these really out there queens and their looks. As girl, there are some good looks in this season. And finally, in this group, we've got Amy Yonsei Michelle, who was a bit of a wild card and a trump card for this crew. Because without Amy, I would not have laughed at this group's presentation not once not once. And we're seeing in rehearsals and confessionals that she's kind of nervous that her English is going to hold her back in a challenge like this. But actually, it really didn't matter what she was saying. It was how she was saying it. Her personality is larger than life and bigger than her two scene partners combined. Like we've got Luna saying absolutely nothing, Nira saying everything and nothing, and then Amy screaming and like jumping up and down and yelling about bridesmaids. And I was really living for any time the camera panned over to her. She absolutely sold it, even though I'm not sure what it was she was selling, but I'm buying it. This performance was a hot. And the runway here gemstone is Sapphire. She says representing the Dominican Republic. And I love that she's got these underwater vibes. She's giving coral reef, queen of the sea, sea anemone, drag pageantry. And I thought the old lady dropped this look in the ocean, but I guess Amy Yance and Michelle swam down there and got it. This look is hot. And tonight our winner is Kitten Caboodle, which I think was absolutely deserved. She was leagues above the rest. And our bottoms are announced to be Cece, Luna, and the Girlfriend Experience. Yes, three bottoms, one top, which sounds like a good time, but there's a golden beaver involved, which complicates things. And firstly, concerning who's in the bottom three, I do agree with Luna and the girlfriend experience, but I'm not so sure about Cece. She, I thought, was the funniest of her group, and it kind of felt like they let Denim slide, because she said almost nothing and got no, I think, real reactions from anybody. And Cece was crazy and kooky and weird, but at least funny. And 
think, I have to think, it really just was her runway and not wearing heels that ultimately sabotaged her. But back to the twist, which we find out is that every week, the Maxi Challenge winner will get the Golden Beaver, which gives them the power to keep one of the bottom three from the episode out of the bottom two. And we get a sort of all-stars moment here where the three different queens who are in our bottom three sort of plead their case to Kitten on why they should be given the Golden Beaver of safety. And lots of tears are shed here, but she does end up giving the beaver to the girlfriend experience. And there wasn't a ton of strategy from what I saw involved in this decision, but it was the first time. And I think she was kind of setting precedent of giving the beaver to the one who got the most positive critiques out of a three overall. But I love this twist because of the possibilities here. Girl, we are gonna have some alliances forming. We're gonna have secret handshakes in the back alley. We are, mm, I love the possibilities here because, right, it gives the winner a little more incentive, a little more power, and like the ability to potentially form an alliance that saves them later in the competition without giving them too much power. Like, they're not going to be responsible for sending somebody home. That, of course, would fall on the queens themselves, who ultimately end up in the bottom. And for the lip sync, we've got Luna and Cece. And I did react to this lip sync over on my Patreon at patreon.com slash bussyqueen, which is my members-only website where my patron family helps support my channel financially every single month with a pledge. And for that financial contribution, they get exclusive bonus content like access to my reaction videos of every episode of Drag Race that I review and early access to my YouTube videos. And you too can become a part of my patron family by clicking the link in the description of this video. See you there. But concerning what I thought about this lip sync, I was whelmed. I was whelmed. Avril's one of my favorite artists of all time. And I don't think either of these queens truly did this song justice. Cece, it seemed like, based on the shots we saw, maybe didn't know all of the words. Like there was some mishmash happening with her mouth. And then we've got Luna dressed like a cat who's like incorporating these cat-like movements into her lip syncing. I don't know that it really fit the theme of or vibe of the song. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a sad song. I honestly thought CC won by like a hair just because the vibe matched a little bit better for me. But it does seem like Luna still has more to offer this competition. Whereas it seems Cece is kind of letting her unpolishedness influence where she's going. Even if that's not how she felt, it kind of says, I don't care about being here if she doesn't have heels on the runway. So I get it. But overall, I've got to say this episode was solid. This was a Gagatrandra. I loved it. The runways were phenomenal. The challenge was fun. I'm so excited for Canada's Drag Race now. And and it's been a long, long time since I've been excited about... I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But it's uh, looking like it's going to be a good season. But of course, I'd love to know what y'all thought. Let me know down in the comments below. Who do you think should have won? Been in the bottom. And uh, who won the lip sync? Yada, yada, yada. As for hottest taunt this episode, on the runway, I'm going to give it to... Venus and the challenge Kitten Caboodle. And I, of course, also asked my patrons to vote on their hottest hots for this episode, and they've chosen for the runway Venus. But that's all I've got for you. Please, please, please click on the link to join my Patreon and help support my channel financially. You get the benefits too. See you there. And finally, I want to give an extra special shout out to Ashley Brungard, Dorothy Hall, Felicia, Frankie, Jeffrey Steenberg, Laura, Matthew Burns, Sailor, Sharkies, Steven, Topher, Tyler, Hendrix, MD, and Will and Tana, who are all supporting me my Bussy Queen collector tier over at patreon.com slash Bussy Queen. See you later. Love ya. Bye.